so remarkable and extraordinary hearing in the Supreme Court today in the Prashant Bhushan contempt case. Now, the court was today hearing arguments on sentencing for Prashant Bhushan to decide what the penalty should be for him for committing contempt of court. Now, as you know, on 14th August, the court said that Bhushan's two recent tweets about the judiciary, one about how the courts played a role in the destruction of democracy, the other with a photo of the Chief Justice of India on a superbike and his comments about that, they said these two tweets uh, constitute criminal contempt of court because they scandalize the court and lower its authority, shaking public confidence in it. And as a result, and they said, you know, they're, they're not fair criticisms of what he said about the court and therefore this is contempt. Now, they didn't pass their uh, decision on punishment that day. They said they would have a hearing on 20th August and that's what happened here. Now, at the end of today's hearing, the court has still not made its decision on punishment. They've asked Bhushan to, however, rethink a statement made by him in defense of his action. Now, this was an incredibly powerful, remarkable statement made by Bhushan in the court today. And I'm going to read a few important sections from that to point out what he said. Because he defended his action and said, I'm not here to ask for mercy. I will submit to whatever the court decides to punish me for, but I don't think I've done anything wrong here. Now, let's look at what he said. Some of the points he makes are, he says that, I am pained that I have been held guilty of committing contempt of court of a court whose majesty I have tried to uphold, not as a courtier or a cheerleader, but as a humble guard for over three decades at some personal and professional cost. He says he's pained because he's punished, not because of the fact that he's being punished, but because he's been misunderstood. Now, he says that, look, he um, says that the court has found him guilty of, you know, malicious, scurrilous, calculated attacks on the judiciary, but that's not what he wants to do because he's dismayed at this conclusion because instead he says that what he was looking to do here was provide, was fulfill his duty as a citizen by uh, offering the right criticism as required. Now, he says public scrutiny is desirable for healthy functioning of the judiciary itself. I believe that open criticism of any institution is necessary in a democracy to safeguard the constitutional order. We are living through a moment in history when higher principles must trump routine obligations, when saving constitutional order must come before personal and professional obligations. Now, this is very, very powerful stuff. He's essentially still saying that I, what I did here was right. I did it for, uh, for to try and protect the institution, to protect our democracy, and therefore I'm not going to apologize. And he concludes by saying, uh, I can only humbly paraphrase what the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, had said in his trial. I do not ask for mercy. I do not appeal to McDonald's. I am here, therefore, to cheerfully submit to any penalty that can lawfully be inflicted upon me for what the court has determined to be an offence. Now, very, very powerful stuff here, and it ties in with a lot of what Bhushan was trying to, Bhushan's lawyers tried to argue today in the court, where they said, where on the issue of sentencing, they tried to point out that look, Bhushan has a long standing at the court of standing up for people's rights, for standing up for transparency, for fighting for democracy. Uh, this should not be punished, or at the very least now, this should be taken into consideration when the court is considering what his punishment should be. Uh, they also went to the fact that Bhushan had filed a very detailed reply affidavit, which he'd actually ex used to explain why he'd made these statements, that the court had played a role in the destruction of democracy, why he said that the CGI's decision to keep the Supreme Court in lockdown while he was taking this photo of the superbike uh, was uh, a denial of access to justice. Now, all of these uh, things were justified in the affidavit. He'd given detail, uh, it had lots of uh, material supporting what he said, statements by other judges, by uh, other commentators, all of whom had made similar points. Now, what's interesting is that the judges actually admitted today in court that they hadn't even referred to that whole affidavit when making their judgment. And this was crucial because as part of the judgment, they had to decide whether Bhushan's criticism was bona fide criticism. And they, however, it seems, had not looked at things, including the 87 pages, which went into great detail about why he was saying the court had failed its constitutional duties of late, whether it was, you know, uh, all the things about the, the last four CGIs, including uh, CGI Govai's sexual harassment case being nominated to the Raj Sabha. There was a lot of material in there. Now, interesting, the judges kept trying to avoid looking at any of this stuff when uh, Bhushan and his lawyers, Dave and uh, Rajiv Dhawan, made their arguments. They kept saying, listen, no, we don't want to get into this. We don't want to go into this. Stop looking. You know, we don't want you to, to talk about these things. We've tried to avoid all of that. And that was a very telling admission from the court today. The other very interesting thing which happened was that Attorney General K.K. Venugopal came up to support Prashant Bhushan. And uh, what was surprising was that the court really didn't let him speak very much. And this was continuing with the fact that they didn't let him speak during the main hearings, even though they had issued notice to him to come and be present. And the Attorney General has a role to play in these kind of proceedings. They did not let him speak during the earlier hearings. During this hearing as well, first he said that, you know, he, he urged the court to not punish Bhushan. After that, he also gave them details of how he also knows retired judges who have said democracy is in danger. He also knows judges who have talked about corruption in the higher judiciary. And again, the judges didn't let him go 
there. So now we don't have a verdict on Bhushan's sentencing. We'll have to wait a few days. Bhushan himself has said he's unlikely to rethink his statement, but has taken some time to think about it. So stay tuned with, uh, with the Quint for all the updates coming forward on this case. It's really a big one for freedom of speech and fundamental rights in this country.